guys, it's Jason up at AndroCorp. Uh, we decided we were going to do a video today um, explaining the difference. Uh, on our website, we have a couple different barrel length, 10.3 uh, inch barrel, 5.56 five, uh, Mark 18 styles. Um, we have a crane spec and a non-crane spec. And today we're going to kind of tell you guys the difference between them because it's a little confusing. Well, crane spec this, uh, Mark 18 that, Mod 1 this, Mod 0 that, right? So today we're going to do a brief video kind of uh, telling you the differences between the two, what the benefits are, pros and cons. I think the first step here is to explain to people what the term crane, what, how that originated and where that came from. And basically it's, it's a city in Indiana, okay? And that's where uh, most of the big decisions involving weapon systems for our military, uh, they're made there, they're researched and developed there, and then they are uh, put into place and plans and then those parts are ordered. And uh, we're talking weapon systems, anything night vision stuff, um, bombs, lasers, communications, anything like that, right? So. Uh, I printed this off of uh, the Crane website and I want to just kind of read it just so uh, I don't make any mistakes here. From the uh, Warfare Center's NSWC Crane Division website, right? Who we are, Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division, located in Crane, Indiana, is a short command of the U.S. Navy. NSWC Crane is under the Naval Sea Systems Command, headquartered in Washington, D.C. Their mission, the mission of uh, NSWC Crane is to provide acquisition engineering, in-service engineering, and technical support for sensors, electronics, electronic warfare, and special warfare operations. It goes on talking about how large their facility is. I mean, they have 3,800 employees. Yeah, 3,800 employees, 2,500 of them are scientists and engineers. So these guys are the ones making all the big decisions, uh, making all the recommendations to our military and what parts they need to source, um, what components work best with this component, what, what barrel length this, what caliber that. In terms of the Mark 18, right, this was uh, a weapon system designed around a 10.3 inch 5.56 barrel. Basically what it means is they decided that for a close quarters weapon, the 10.3 inch and 5.56 was the best overall option. Um, in terms of the broad scale, obviously you're going to see a lot of different uh, units using all types of different weapons, right? You've got HK MP5s, 9mm, but I think what they wanted here was something that has more stopping power, uh, more effective damage, and still be short and compact, and the ability to be run suppressed without it being uncomfortable for the shooter, right? So. What we offer on our site, and you guys have probably seen this, and if you haven't, we offer two different setups and a 10.3 inch 5.56 barrel, okay? They're all one seven twist. The gas port size is what the difference is, right? And then we offer it with the uh, old school front A2 F mark front sight base, and then we offer it stripped if you want to do something like this and have a lot of accessories and, you know, all that stuff, right? Um, the difference between them is basically the gas port size. The gas port is what decides how gassy the weapon is going to be, how fast it's going to cycle. When you put a silencer on it, how much gas is going to get sprayed back in your face? So you want a smaller gas port when running a suppressor on this barrel length, right? That's why they, they did the 070 gas port for the crane program um, to the U.S. Uh, Navy SEALs and SOCOM and so forth, right? If you haven't shot a 10 and a half inch, and this applies to a 10 and a half inch barrel as well on 5.56. If you haven't shot one, you're probably not going to know what I'm talking about. But if you have shot one and you have run a suppressor on them and you have a standard gas port of barrel, which would be around 078, 080, um, and by gas port, guys, what I'm talking about is a little hole that's drilled right here. This hole is, this is what dictates how much gas gets into the system and how fast the weapon's going to cycle. The faster it's going to cycle, the more gas in the system, the more gas that's going to just come out of the gun somewhere. And unfortunately, when you're shooting this thing and you're behind the gun, it comes back right in your face. And it's a freaking nightmare. It sucks. Your glasses are covered in oil. Uh, it's not comfortable for you. Um, you can't see what you're doing after you dump a mag. So... Um, they decided that they wanted a smaller gas port and that's what they ended up adopting so that when you put the silencer on, which increases more pressure into the system, all that pressure's got to go somewhere. When it goes back to push the bolt and the excess gas, it's too much gas. It's called over gas. It's basically just shot right out through the back of the charging handle, okay? And it ends up where? Right in your face. Not a good thing. Um, if you've ever seen uh, some of our earlier videos before we did this uh, crane spec thing, we're kind of squinting when we're shooting, and that's because there's gas coming back in your face. A long time ago, and I think we were the first one, yeah, we were definitely the first one with Ballistic Advantage to ask for an 070 Crane Spec Barrel. And again, Crane, Indiana, US SOCOM, they basically decided, right, that that is the ideal gas port size in order to get the weapon to cycle with the broadest variety of ammunition, right? Now let's talk about what happens when you do not run a silencer on a crane spec .070 barrel. So for you guys that are never going to buy a silencer, this is not what you want to buy. You do not want to buy the 070, you want to buy the 078. The 078 is going to cycle a broader range of ammo. Um, you're getting full power. Um, you're not 
if you don't have a silencer, you're not getting that extra force that the silencer creates within the weapon to cycle the actions. You're getting less gas with the 070. The silencer creates more pressure, so it will still cycle. If you do not have a silencer and you do have one of our 070 barrels, 5.56 ammo generally will run just fine, but as soon as you put 223 in it, you're gonna notice you might get a couple fatal feeds or the bolt catch is not gonna engage after the last round. So that bolt is cycling and it's short stroking a little bit because there's not as much gas there. So the bolt catch is not gonna catch it when the mag goes empty or the end of the mag and the bolt doesn't lock to the rear. Not that big of a deal. Um, if you have a row 70 and you are running without a suppressor, you've probably experienced that. And if you have it, it's because you're shooting full power 5.56 ammo. Uh, the 223, for instance, if you went and bought PMC 223 or just any of that kind of stuff, it's weaker ammo in general. It's not creating as much pressure, so it's going to move. The, it won't move the bolt back as far. Um, so I would recommend that if you are going to get one of our 10.3 at setups, know what you're going to be doing with it. Well, if I, you know, think to yourself, well, am I going to add a silencer at some point in the future? If that's like an unrealistic goal for you, just get the 078 that's on our website and either variant. Um, but if you're like, yeah, I'm going to run a suppressor. I know that I'm going to run it, um, even if you don't have it yet. Get the 070 and just shoot 5.56. Just try to keep it 5.56 until you do get your suppressor. And then when you get your suppressor, you're good to go. Um, as long as you're running 5.56, full power brass ammunition, it will, uh, it will still cycle it, so it's not a big deal. Um, what we have here is one of our Mark 18s. Uh, you know, this just kind of gives you guys an idea of what you can do um, if you want to go crazy and you want to spend a lot of money uh, on your gun, right? There's all kinds of different accessories and different ways to set these things up. You'll see traditionally the old front sight base type 10.3. Uh, Usually you'll have a little quad rail or some plastic hangars and very like a keep it simple stupid build. Um, when you do that, that would be a mod zero. If you're gonna do the mod one, then this is when you get the free float hangar and you could add all the goodies on there. You got lasers, lights, backup sights, all that kind of stuff, right? I think that should answer all of your questions. Um, if you guys have any other questions, comments below, type them in. We usually respond pretty quick. We can kind of answer your questions. If you're not gonna buy a suppressor, you don't need crane spec. Crane spec, this whole crane spec terminology was all designed around what happens when someone puts a silencer on a 10 and a half inch barrel. How do I make it more comfortable for the shooter? I do believe that we are the absolute first retail company that offered a 10.3 070 barrel that you can just buy at the cart and get it shipped to your house. I for sure was the first one to ask Ballistic Advantage for it. They did it for us and now it's a product they sell on their site. I, well, I know for a fact that Daniel Defense was not doing it. Colt was doing it, but they were only doing it for SOCOM, so you couldn't get an 070 ported uh, barrel from Colt, I do believe, four or five years ago. I think we were the first ones, so that's a little claim to fame, I think. Uh, I don't know. In my mind, it is anyway, because I, that, that's freaking awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching the video.